Hi, everybody. Hope you're well. And hope that you can hear me. I am on the mend. So I hope my voice is hearable. I don't even know if that's a word, but I hope it's hearable. Um, I've got my tea. I got my Bible. I'm ready. Um, again, it's a solo, a solo talk. And let's see how it goes. I'm going to try to be very succinct and hopefully not as long winded. Um, so bear with me. First and foremost, I just got off watching um, Stephen Darby's The Waking Up. And if I remember, if I can manage to, because sometimes YouTube is weird, I'll try to post it in the link it in the description box. Great video. Um, I was watching it, watching it. I was listening to it and initially I thought he was talking about one thing and he was going to stick with that, but he ended up incorporating a whole bunch of things and it was just really, it's a good listen. Watch it. I am coming on here today um, because I wanted to discuss, I guess I'm going to title it uh, Fruit. And basically my talk is going to come from, oh, my talk. <laughs> Like I'm a professor. I just want to share about something that was very um, freeing, you know, um, when my sister and I kind of came to it. In the scripture that talks about you shall know them by their fruit. Um, I can't give you a specific, uh, I can't tell you off, off, the, off the bat of my head, but, you know, you, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that scripture. I think when we, I can't remember when we were first having that conversation about that. I think it was several, several years ago. And I'll just say in short that it was very freeing just hearing that, you know, because sometimes it's like you're doing life and you're just wondering about things. You're wondering why it seems like, you know, maybe the wicked are flourishing. Why do, I don't know, why is the sky blue? You know, you start asking some some of these deeper reflective questions based on what you're going through in life. And I think one of the things that we ended up drawing from, or at least definitely something that I draw a lot of comfort from, is sometimes when you look at something and maybe you feel some kind of way for having the reaction you have, is to take comfort because at the end of the day, Jesus himself is talking about fruit. I believe this is a parable that Jesus was talking about and saying that, you know what, by the people's fruit shall you know what's going on. And especially when it came to him cursing the fig tree, because the fig tree was supposed to be producing, you know, during its season and it wasn't producing fruit. Anyways, I don't want to go down that tangent, but knowing that you shall know them by their fruit. And I think in this moment right now, we have a lot of people who are saying a lot of things, but their actions are not lining up with what they're saying. In particular, I want to talk about Sierra. And it's so interesting because several months ago, I wanted to have a conversation about her. Several, several months. And it was going to be titled Sexy Mamas, something, something. And you know, if I find my notes and if I have an inkling to do it, I'll come back and do it. Because it was Sierra and a few other people. But I think the thing that triggered me at that moment was um, something that was trending with her um, having, she had the, the rum bottle on her head. And I think it was, was it a bottle of Bacardi? Um, and she was doing some type of wine challenge. Oh, watch me, you know, do some sort of whining, you know, with the bottle and the bottle is going to stay balanced on my head while I have my back all out. <laughs> Child, you can't make this stuff up. And I was really thrown by that. I watched it and I was just like, but Sierra, girl, why are you out here, you know, acting like a complete hoochie? I don't even know, do hoochies, is that even a word that people still do? <laughs> like, wh why are you doing this, Sierra? Why? Like, I just, I just was really thrown. Thrown or torn? One of them. And I just was confused because I was like, you're over here and you're espousing all of these, these Christian isms and, but the actions aren't lining up and remember isms. Cause that's what a lot of people are doing. Well, they're saying isms. They sound, they're saying things that are these sound bites 
that make you think certain things. But when you look at their life, you look at the fruit, the fruit is rotten. Okay. Now we're leading up into this recent, I don't know, Grammy event or Oscar event, whichever. You guys know what it is. And she's showing up naked. Sorry, this lady, I'm looking at her and her dogs wearing clothes and it's March. Anyways, whatever. She's naked. She is naked. She is naked. Again. Just like the video I did last, last week, whenever it posted, it's fine. Y'all want to come out these streets naked, do what you do, but don't call yourself a Christian. Don't come out the streets, on the streets naked and start quoting uh, scriptures for them and sharing your quote unquote Sierra prayer. Um, People don't say that Sierra prayer. That's a witch prayer. Nothing to do with Jesus. First of all, don't nobody know. She's over here telling you that she prayed that prayer and that's how she ended up with Russell Wilson. You don't know what it is. And I was saying this to my sister, you know, sometimes you say things and it says, it sounds harsh and it sounded harsh when I said it, but I'm like, do we really know? Is she even a Christian? She could be a bona fide witch. We don't know. But I, what I do know, and I'm telling you, this is what I take comfort in. What are the fruit? You can't tell me that a real Christian woman is going to walk out her house naked 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 for what reason what you naked for girl what you naked for what seriously someone what is she naked for what was her purpose that's what i'm saying christians when we're watching these things not only do we need to remind ourselves of, of scriptures but we need to be thinking what is her purpose what, why is she naked? She has no reason to be naked. Is she a prostitute? Like, no, seriously, why is she naked? We need to start asking ourselves deeper questions. What's the purpose of this? It's screaming witch. It's screaming seductress. It's screaming, I am a fake. I'm not who I am. Let's not be deceived. In these last days, let's not be carried away by people. And we think, oh, look at her. She was able to get Russell Wilson, a nice Christian man. I'm just going to be just like her. And oh, not even just, I'm going to be just like her, meaning I can be a Christian and still be in the world. I'm going to be a Christian and still be having a Bacardi bottle and winding on my waist. And first of all, when I saw that too, I must add, it seemed very witchy. I feel like I've heard, like in these occult circles, don't they take the Bacardi, the, 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 the shot of the rum, and they, don't they spit it out to, as a gift to the, to the gods, to the demon spirits? And you're here doing some type of sensual dance with the Bacardi? I'm sorry. I was, I was, it was, it was triggering too many. I'm like, Mm-mm, this, this not right. But back to her nakedness. She's been suspect for a long time. To be honest, you know, I was thinking about, you know, I mean, I really, I didn't follow uh, Sierra. I mean, I know her one, two step, blah, blah, you know, but I, she's not, you know, someone who I'm like, yeah, 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 Sierra. I mean, I was rooting for her because she always seemed like a nice girl and I'm going to, you know, happy for you, rooting for you. But then when she started dating future, I was really torn and thrown. I can't be. I'm going to mix up those words for the rest of the day. That threw me because I was like, she doesn't seem like the type that would date, you know, a guy like future who has such a, a bad reputation, you know, but that's what she did. Um, so when she ended up with Russell Wilson and then she came about and she was talking all these Jesus-y things, 
I was like, well, I was happy for her. I was like, oh, look at her. She's turning a new leaf. You know, she's, she's, she's getting serious about her walk with God. And look, she's been blessed with a man, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was happy for her. But then I, I slowly started to see things that didn't line up. And my sister pointed out one good thing. She was like, why was it when, and I think she did it with both pregnancies. Why was it when she was pregnant? You know, I'm just tired of seeing these pregnant women with their bellies out doing twerking. Would you? <laughs> You've got your seed, this, your, your fruit. I mean, this is a blessing and you're twerking for the gram, for the YouTubes. Why? Why do you have a feeling like, why does it seem you're so pressed to still be in the world in such a sensual way? Why? So that's what my sister shared. And I, I was like, yeah, you got a point. The thing that got me to was a few years ago. I don't remember when she was debuting a, a song collaboration with this Brazilian artist. Never heard of this person. I think she happened to go to Carnival. And, um, there are other people out and about just walking around. Uh, and I remember watching the video and I was like, this seems very sensual and very, kind of occultic vibey. I don't know how else to say it in a nice way. You know, sometimes a lot of the times the places where you go, you know, places where that have a lot of black people, DNA wise, like Afro people, you can tend to find a lot of weirdness. And I think the video is just weird. You know, people are always trying to be quote unquote creative. Remember what I said in my previous video, creativity, art is a, a nice way to entangle all your witchery in there. So I was watching the video. The video was weird. And I feel like I commented also on her video. I can't remember what the what the song was called. I feel like even maybe the lyrics of the song had maybe the name of some sort of Yoruba god or goddess. I can't remember, so I don't let me not misspeak. But I just remember it was very weird. And I was like, but Sierra, are you not professing or do you not profess to be a Christian? We need to just draw the line right here. We need to be clear. People need to know, hey, a Christian is like this, and a Christian is is not like this. Because I feel like there's just a lot of lukewarmness and I'm just giving this video or giving this video, sharing this video and hopefully just encouraging someone out there. Guys, don't look at the world and think that you're going to get advice on your faith from the world. You need to look at the Bible. You need to be inspired by the Bible. You need to be reading and learning. Let the Holy Spirit be te teach you because the examples that you're getting from these um, Hollywood or um, famous Christians are poor examples of what it means to be a Christian. The other day, watching uh, Angela Bassett lose the Oscar, you know, and everybody's, you know, flipping out over her losing. I was like, wow, you know, Angela, Angela barely misses when she wears an outfit. Whoever styles her really does a great job. Beautiful purple dress. But something caught me, and I'm pretty sure it's the same thing that maybe caught you two, P, you two, P, you guys too, um, was her necklace. And I'm picking on Angela because Angela is a Christian, and I know my sister used to live in LA and used to go to the same church that she used to go to, so that's what I'm going to say. She had a snake around her neck. Now, let me just ask you for the people out there in the back, if y'all can hear me. If y'all are Christians, then comment in the comment section below. Would you wear a necklace, a snake necklace? Because I know I wouldn't. I would not knowingly wear a snake necklace. What is she doing wearing a snake, a snake necklace? Really? A snake. 
Anyways, again, I'm just saying that we shall know them by their fruit. What are people producing? What are people associating themselves with? What are people making? What are people drawn to? What are people wearing? Oh, I like this because, you know, you know, every time I see it just brings me comfort. Oh, I these crystals. Oh, crystals, would you say? Huh? You know, we need to listen to people and just what exactly are they saying and are they repeating and what are the things that they're doing? Because again, we shall know them by their fruits. Another person, this is all recent stuff, uh, Chan Lamore's wife. And you know, because it, I don't follow Chan Lamore, I've already done a video of Chan Lamore, and I see Chan Lamore, I think, mm, I actually turn it off. I'm, I'm not interested in him. I don't think he's providing anything that the body needs. And you need to be extra careful when you're, especially your worship music should not be tainted whatsoever. You need to try your hardest. You need to get someone, listen to a, a, a sound that is pure. Because worship is spiritual. Worship is now when the supernatural is really occurring. I talked about in my previous video about how, you know, the sound that David played for Saul was chasing demons. Okay? This is biblical. This is not me making stuff up. Read your Bibles. Your sound needs to be, you need to make sure your sound is right. So anyways, I don't follow Chandler because of that. I'm actually, I question whether that wife of his, and I'm sorry, I, sometimes you just hate to say these things because you sound like such a quote unquote hater. But to be honest, I don't know, like, I don't know if his wife, his wife doesn't strike me as someone who is a spiritual warrior. I'm just, let me just leave it there. But anyways, the wife, again, they go to the Grammys and I heard, um, in passing, I heard Marcus, I listened to a little bit of a video that he did about why were they even there. I think that's an excellent point. We all know, or at least by this point, depending on how deep you are in your walk, that the Oscars, um, I think, was it Stephen Darby who said that they're just um, a ritual. And when you watch it and you go to them, you're like participating in this ritual. But I feel like I saw clips of the Oscar, of, of the Grammy, sorry. And it was just a bunch of red devil junk. And it was even funny, Rihanna showed up at the Super Bowl, you know, was it afterwards, I think? in red. Guys, watch people in these colors. Colors have significance. Everything has significance. Because even think about you, when you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, I feel happy. Oh, uh, whatever. Oh, I'm going to date. I want to I look sexy. You wear certain things for certain reasons. Angela has a snake on her neck for a reason. Rihanna's wearing red for a reason. And she's pregnant with red. I don't know. Go to Revelation. Look it up. This transvestite who's performing, or I don't know if he's a transvestite, but whatever that Sam guy is, I feel like I saw a clip. Was he wearing red or this or the, the friend? I don't know. It's for a reason. These things are weird and 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 gross and dark. For a reason, all of these, oh, I'm going to build a set and it's going to be moody because guess what? It's my creativity. It's art. No, it's not. It's witchcraft and it's sorcery. It's wizardry and it's in broad daylight. And you guys are sleeping on the wheel if you're not accepting and seeing what these things are. Take it for what it is. It ain't no art. Anyways, tangent. Chandler Moore's wife at this Grammy event is wearing a see-through dress. First of all, the dress was ugly. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to be mean, but she says she's a stylist. Girl, why can't you level up and be dressing like Angela Bassett? Classy. You, you look like you got something from 579, and 579 doesn't even exist anymore. It was, it's not your color. I'm not trying to be mean. I just, I just, when people say I'm a stylist, I'm expecting more from you. But anyways, it's a see-through dress. And you were wearing nude undergarments. Like, come on, why is it see-through? You are the pastor's wife. Believe it or not, whether you want to accept it or not, your husband is a, a worshiper or calls himself a worshiper worshiper in my in in my opinion it's like you are a you are you're like a pastor you're in charge of worship 
It's just that the way things are right now, people are able to do these things without churches. I just don't understand, like, how can people can just so casually accept these things or casu- casually um, approach these offices without any respect? I did a video about that. You guys just want to show up anyhow. Oh, it don't take any of that. Even that's why, why does Chandler Moore even look so sloppy sometimes? Oh, it's my art. You know, it's just, it's just how I, you know, this is, this is my style. It can be your style, but it doesn't look sloppy. Anyways, let me just gear myself up that way because I don't want to come across as being overly critical and overly mean. I think I'm extra fired up listening to Pastor Darby's um, video. I think if I read that correctly, he did it seven years ago. You know, if people follow him at all, know that obviously he's no longer with us. I'm just thinking such a loss, you know, to the body. Because it's just, this this man is just, whew, he's preaching. And what he said and just about being serious guys let's not get caught up in foolishness right now there's a lot of things that are that are distracting right now um and i think it's good for you to be hot be red hot so you can so you can you can just see these things and just be like uh eh And just shut it down, shut it down, shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. Um, and that's why I think it gives me courage to continue to be, I don't want to say outspoken because I don't think I'm outspoken, but, you know, to continue to have a voice that is unwavering. Because I feel like sometimes when you, the church right now is just okay with anything. Just what, whatever. You, oh, 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 you are LGBTQ. Alpha. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We got space for you. We can marry you. We can do this. We can do this. Oh, you divorce. You're going on your third. Oh, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We ain't got no standards. We ain't got, We. I mean, the church is just, this is probably why Jesus came and flipped out. Because this is, this is his, this is his father's house. Y'all coming in here with your ratchetness in my father's house. He said, no, absolutely not. And that's why we should, we should be rising up with righteous indignation and refusing this junk. I reject all this stuff. I'm sorry. Absolutely not. No. So Sierra, you're canceled. (laughs) <laughs> not that I'm buying your CDs anyways, whatever, but girl, we done here. I, I wasn't, I wasn't, no, mm-mm. and I'm not sure what Russ is sipping on because Russ is confused. And I, and I told my sister, was it no way that he should have gotten in that car? First of all, he should have told her to change. And when she said no, which I'm pretty sure she would have, he should have said, nah, I ain't going. He should have stayed himself home. At no point should any man of God have showed up with his wife who was naked. I'm just saying. Why? For what for? For you to become the butt of the joke? For you to be reduced? What was our favorite quote? We like to say this a lot. For out of a, a contentious woman, a man is reduced to a crumb of bread. I mean, hey, women do this day in, day out, reducing men to nothing. Look at, look at, look at, what's her name? Delilah. Delilah didn't love Samson. Samson was in love with her. She, she didn't love him. She was using him. Because the people of them came and said, we'll give you, I don't know, how many shekels or how many things of silver to, for you to, to help us kill him. She was like, okay, bet. 
you guys need to be careful of the women you associate yourself with and women of God. Let us be true women of God. Let us ever be be pushing and striving towards being women who are completely sold out for Christ and completely ever willing to want to to please an almighty God and to always be open and to be flexible to the to 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 the I don't want to say bending to the to the instructions of the Holy Spirit. You can't tell me that as a woman of God, don't nobody have to tell you. People in the comment section are like, yeah, you know, I wouldn't disrespect my husband. No, you respect yourself. The Holy Spirit who lives inside of you is going to tell you, girl, you can't wear that. Unless it's for your evening thing with your husband. You can't wear that outside. You know better. Ain't nobody got to tell you nothing. You know that. I ain't disrespecting nobody. Why I got to get to my husband? He didn't even got to get there. If I thought it was okay, the Holy Spirit goes, ka, 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 knock, 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 girl, you know you can't wear that. And let's say you didn't listen to that. Then the husband should have been the final authority in that situation and said no. So anyways, let us be ever flexible to the instructions and to the quiet but stern instruction that the Holy Spirit gives. Because the Holy Spirit is alive and the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And he is forever teaching and constantly teaching if we would just listen. Listen. May we not be found wanting. Guys, let's just press. Let's not be found wanting. Let's not be found wanting. I see a kid coming. And I think that's a good time to end. Hi, TJ. People doing the most in this household. They say he's going to go mail a letter. He ain't got no stamp. He's just going to put a paper in the mailbox. (laughs) all right people be blessed take time get in the word stay steeped and take care